Hi, this is James at knowthen.com. In this screencast, I will look at callback functions and their successor, generators. I think Node's great for several reasons. There's tons of open source packages you can use, a great package manager, a huge vibrant community, it's fast and it's efficient. However, there is one big drawback in my opinion, and that's callback functions. Callbacks really complicate what could be a simple workflow. Let me show you with some code. All right, I'm going to create a simple server in Express.js. The server will get past a zip code as part of the URL path. Then based on the zip code, it will look up three things. The city and state for the particular zip code, the population within the zip code, and the current temperature for the zip code. And lastly, the server will return this information to the client as a simple string. The first thing I'm going to do is import a few modules that I will use to build the server. Next I will create my Express app. Now I'm going to tell Express anytime a GET request is made that matches this URL pattern, handle it with the function I pass in. I'm going to define a few variables that will store the information we're going to look up. Next, I'm going to pull out the zip code that is specified in the URL path. There are two queries that I need to make that can be run in parallel. Since we're using callbacks, I'm going to use the parallel function in the async library to execute these two queries at the same time. The way I tell the async library what to run in parallel is by passing it an array of functions. The first item in the array will call the findLocationByZipCode function. The next item in the array will call the findPopulationByZipCode function. The last parameter that I need to pass into the parallel function is a callback function. Like all callbacks in Node, the first parameter is for errors and the second parameter is the result of the parallel queries. If we encounter an error, I'm going to respond with an error status code and a message. Otherwise, I'm going to pull the values out of the array and into a couple of variables. Next, if we have values for the location and population, we'll look up the temperature. However, I will send an error back if we don't get both the location and population. Now the function I will use to find the weather needs a latitude and longitude, which fortunately was provided by the location lookup we just did. And lastly, I will pass in a callback function. If there was an error, I'll handle it like we did before. Otherwise, if the temperature was found, we can just return the values as a string. I'm going to put each value that we returned into the variables we defined earlier. Now I'm going to concatenate all this information into one string and return it back using the response object. I also need to return something if the temperature wasn't found, so I'll return an error like before. The final thing I need to do is have my Express app listen on a port number. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the console and try running our server. Okay, let's test our server from the browser. I already have a page up from earlier testing. I'll go ahead and refresh it. Looks like I may have missed a comma and some spacing. Let's fix that. Now I'll restart our node server and refresh the page. Quite a bit of code and complexity for a very simple set of queries. All the complexity stems from using callbacks. Let's take a look at a new alternative to using callbacks, generators. I'm going to rewrite the server, getting rid of all the callbacks, and instead using yield statements within a generator function. So I'm going to get rid of the async library and replace it with the co-generator library. Now I'm going to get rid of everything inside of the parallel function, which is pretty much all the useful code. Okay, now I'm going to call the co-function and pass in a generator function. The only difference in syntax between a regular function and a generator function is the asterisk placed after the function keyword. 
Calling the co function doesn't actually execute the code inside of it. Co returns a function that I need to call to start the generator. I no longer need to use callbacks with error parameters. Instead, I can use a try catch block. Now, it still makes sense for me to run those two queries in parallel, like we did earlier. This is easily accomplished in the co library by yielding either an object or an array. Co will then run any yieldable items within the object or array in parallel. Next, I will check to see if the location and population were found. If they weren't found, I'll return an error. Otherwise, let's look up the temperature. Now I've looked up all three items asynchronously in a flatter, non-callback way. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the results into the variables I defined above. Next I will concatenate all the answers together and return the results. Now the last thing I need to do is handle any errors. I will go ahead and respond to errors as I have before. Now I'll run the new server. However, I'm using a relatively new feature which requires the use of the Harmony flag. Okay, let's try out our server in the browser. It works. That's pretty sweet. All the complexity of callbacks are gone using the yield keyword inside of a generator. There is one thing to keep in mind. You can't yield an API that's only set up for callbacks. You can only yield promises, thunks, or other generators. However, it's fairly trivial to convert an existing API into a yieldable API. I'll go over that in a future screencast.